Okay, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening to some, good morning to others. Thank you today for attending our Minnesota School of Excellence webinar uh, featuring uh, Mark Jansen and Holly Higby Jansen on iPhonography. So uh, the, today's webinar is iPhonography, getting the shot using your iPhone. And hopefully this will be an extremely entertaining webinar for people as they learn uh, some of the features of what their iPhones can do and, of course, uh, incorporate it into some of their shooting. Because, of course, the great thing about iPhones is they do have a nice little camera on them, and it does allow people to take photos in an instant when they need them if they don't have a larger or a bridge camera or any other type of camera with them. Of course, uh, we're, I'm going to introduce our guest speakers in a minute, but the nice thing about today's webinar, we are uh, uh, broadcasting it worldwide, and it is being posted through the Metrodo School of Excellence. So the great thing is everybody will have an opportunity, uh, of course, to ask questions throughout the webinar on the toolbar, and I'll explain that in a second. As you can see, Mark Jansen and Holly Higby Jansen are the people that are going to be doing our webinar today for us. And at the bottom of their image, you can see all their connections and their website and all the great things, ways you can contact them if you do have any questions. And the great thing is uh, Mark and Holly do uh, Jansen photo expeditions. And these expeditions may allow you to look at the possibility of attending one of their workshops. And I'm sure they'll touch a little bit more on their workshops. But the great thing is if you want to expand some of your photography or photographic endeavors, you may be interested in attending one of their workshops. Um, in your toolbar, you're going to see the Knowledge is Power toolbar. And that particular toolbar is great for you to ask questions. And we will try and answer the questions as we go live. And whatever questions we are not able to answer, maybe more pertaining to uh, Mark and Holly, we will pass those questions along to them. And then they will be able to get back to you in regards to answering those questions personally. Uh, just because, again, of the nature of it, of webinars, there's sometimes an opportunity to ask a question, and we may not be able to have the technical rep online that can answer it and maybe more directed to Mark and Holly in terms of what they do. So the great thing is we uh, definitely re welcome any questions, and they do get recorded when we hand over the attendee report to uh, Mark and Holly after the webinar. So going through, Mark and Holly are our iPhonographers today, and they're the people that are going to be looking after this lovely webinar for us. And I'm, my name is Will Holoka. I'm a product manager here in the U.S., and I work for Menfrotto Distribution. I look after the lighting side of our division uh, here at Menfrotto, so I'm responsible for Menfrotto Lighting, Avenger Grip, Mets Lighting, Goss, and Meters. And then I also handle a great new little line that we're handling called the Clip, which is a line of... Uh, accessories that can be attached to iPhones, and of course that's what our webinar is based on today. Uh, we also have Kevin Lackey with us, who is our, one of our tech reps, and he'll be assisting us with some of our questions today. So Mark and Holly, are you there? Yes, yes, yes we're, we're here. here. Very good. If you guys can just tell us a little bit about yourselves, and then we can get started in the webinar, and I'll turn the screen over to you. Well, hi. Um, hi, I'm Mark Jansen. Uh, Jansen hosts Photo Expeditions and Jansen Fine Art Photography. Um, Holly and I, um, we do uh, expedition workshops with the digital, digital SLR and um, iPhone now. Um, my main photography business is um, uh, landscape um, portraiture and um, commercial installations of my aviation imagery and small large corporate businesses. Um, I've been involved with photography for a number of years and Holly and I over the last, well, I would say the last 10 years, we brought together and created Jansen Photo Expeditions which is actually um, imparting our knowledge on people and trying to get people out and taking photos. Um, so, and, and another integral part of our business is we teach um, a digital, you know, basic digital SLR classes in a classroom setting as well as Photoshop as well. So, Very uh, good. And I know you guys do a lot of different workshops, and they include some that are done at Big Sur uh, in California. You do some stuff in Eastern Sierra, Yosemite National Park. Oregon coast and Tanzania and Africa. So there's some great extra uh, different types of expeditions if people are looking for something a little out of the ordinary. And again, uh, Mark and Holly, uh, the great thing is they complement each other with their different artistic and organizational and, and outdoor skills. So that's a great thing when it comes to attending an expedition type uh, teaching. 
And the great thing is, as well, they also do a lot of different photo tours. So that, that is a nice way to definitely learn and improve your photographic career uh, or endeavors. So at this point, I'm going to turn the webinar over to Mark and Holly. I'm going to change to their screen. So Mark and Holly, here comes the screen now, and you can just accept it. And we'll get okay. to see your screen. Uh, and show my screen. Yep, okay. please show your screen, and then we will get started with your presentation. Okay. All righty, here we go. So you've... Okay. Uh, does that all look, look, look good? Let me just take a quick look. Yep, everything looks great. Okay. All right, great. excellent. So, uh, so we did get the, uh, our introduction. So yes, we are Mark and Holly Jansen from Jansen Photo Expeditions. Um, so, so this iPhone, this uh, webinar is iPhoneography: Getting the Shot Using Your iPhone. Yeah, we go over uh, some, we're go over some basic things on how to actually make good use of this phone. Uh, the iPhone's really taken over, um, taken over photography uh, in a certain sense. It's uh, creativity at your fingertips, and we're finding it through our own photography, our regular professional photography with regular digital SLRs, that it's um, enhanced our creativity uh, to a level that we didn't expect. Um, it's it's a, it's a device that's at hand, and um, through the composition uh, features of it, you're able to uh, capture a, a wide variety of imagery uh, qu quite quickly. Whereas before, um, normally you're in through a setup mode using a lot of heavier equipment. Um, I found it's uh, it's really expanding our 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 vision, uh, our clarity of what we see, and um, so. So one thing we do have a warning that it can, may be habit forming. Yeah, this is a big problem with iPhoneography. <laughs> Once you start getting that camera going, you can you know, it really gets addictive. And um, sometimes we have a hard time getting serious uh, about our stuff. Sometimes, and we have to say, okay, put the iPhone down. Uh, you have to get serious. And uh, yeah. Um, so uh, as you can see, it's very it's easy to use. It's uh, it's it's a great it's a great. Uh, it's a great tool. Yeah, this is uh, on one of our workshops. Uh, we take a small groups out, and um, this <laughs> this gentleman was uh, having some fun with some dogs here. Uh, <laughs> but the best thing about it is it is the camera that's in your pocket. Uh, yeah. The spontaneity of the iPhone is is amazing. Yeah, it's, it's such a spontaneous and creative tool. Uh, and I think that's what's what's causing this revolution with it. Um, people are uh, accessing uh, pictures, and the kind of pictures you can capture with the iPhone happen within a moment. You can be driving down the road in your car and see something quickly and you just pop that camera out the window and get a shot um, that you couldn't normally do. Um, I think that's why you see a lot of uh, a lot of press photography coming through through iPhone now because you know everyone's a photographer these days and um, it's just a matter of trying to uh, use this device in a way where you can actually uh, you know learn a few simple skills and composition and how to make better pictures with it. And and these types of shots are done with a minimal of editing, so that's that's the great thing about it too is you can you can get these great looking shots and just do a minimal amount of editing, and that's what we'll talk a little bit about today as well. Mm -hmm. and, and that brings up a good question, Mark and Holly. One of the uh, attendees today has asked, "What do you guys primarily, or what software do you guys primarily edit your iPhone pictures in?" Well, it it, it really depends. Uh, we use a lot of uh, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of applications you can get uh, that work, um, and we have uh, a list of a, quite a few ones we use. Um, yeah, and other than using, um, you can actually use Photoshop too if you want to later on take the picture and uh, load it on your regular software and do some editing with it. Um, the one that we like, um, I like uh, Snapseed. I use Snapseed quite a bit. Um, I find it's an easy interface. Um, it's real simple. You can do a lot with it. It's a relatively inexpensive download. Um, I and that, that's that's in camera. And I like to a lot of times I like to edit on using my iPad um, a lot with that application. Um, it's more of an interfacing software, sort of sort of like uh, Photoshop. Um, so many of these other uh, applications are uh, have simple simple um, you know simple interfaces. But um, if you'd like to send us an email, we can. Uh, Send him a, a list of them. Actually, that we have. 
Yes, very good. We'll make sure when you get the attendee report, you can send anybody that is a referred to that question, and we, you can respond to them with the different types of softwares that you may use. Okay. Great. So uh, this just shows, shows some other um, types of images that we're, we're catching. Now, these were on our regular workshops where we're, we're using our digital SLR, but, you know, you pull out the iPhone at the same time, and it just gives you um, another, another way to look at it. Um, and I think that this was something from our Big Sur workshop, and uh, it just gives you another uh, amazing way to capture. This is a fun one. Uh, there's a lot of cool effects you can get with these applications. Once you um, once you nail down the whole compositional part of uh, of iPhone and um, little general photography, um, then you can just enhance these images. Um, this one I put a uh, a nice uh, a cool uh, grunge effect on it. And it made it pop kind of nice. When it the comes, other thing that sorry, let me just add another attendee question. When it mm -hmm. comes to working with the iPhone, uh, can you actually compensate for exposure with it, plus or minus, or do you do that mostly in post? Um, actually, uh, there are some applications that help you do this, um, where you can actually lay over a, a selection on the screen for the highlights and then in the low lights and then you can combine these together as, as a, a high dynamic range type of image um, but there are ways to do this yeah and the thing with the iPhone um, it has its limitations but it, uh, what it makes up for is the creative power that it has and the expression and that's what we find that's amazing about the iPhone it's spontaneous and um, if it's a little overexposed or underexposed Sometimes it doesn't matter, and if you're, it's all about, I hate to quote a phrase, it's all about the image um, with, the, with photography in general. If you have a strong image, if it's a little underexposed or overexposed, it doesn't make much difference. So as, um, as we go on, uh, this image shows, uh, was taken with a, a lens adapter that actually clips on to the top of the iPhone, and we'll show you a picture of that as we go through, but I'm just... We're just showing you some of the some of the really fun effects that you can get with this. Yeah, there's uh, yeah, this is a fisheye effect, and then we ran it through a little processing. This is a high dynamic range process. Um, it's a great uh, oak tree out in our Santa Paula workshop. We did this one oh, about six months ago, yeah. I think. And and easy, really easy to do. Yeah, really easy. This is not this isn't really complicated. Um. And so the, the different ways that you do it, we can, you can actually mix filters. Like imagine if you were doing Photoshop and you're doing different layers of, of, um, of filters. So this is what we did with this one. We actually took this with a, with a wide angle adapter and then added some filters with it. Mm -hmm. Nice um, posterization effect. So all of this is done in foam. This is all done, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we like to keep it keep it pretty clean. So anything that we do with the iPhone, we edit within the iPhone. Anything we do with our digital SLR, we do with Photoshop. Yeah. In an event, though, you want to load it to your iPad, you can do the editing on that, too. Because some of these, a lot of these applications will you'll go with iPad and iPhone to work together. So let's talk about some real basics. Yeah, a big part about photography, uh, especially with the iPhone, you know, you have this whole uh, part where you're, if you're doing street photography, um, you don't want to be as obvious with your phone. And normal street photography is very um, elusive, and you don't want to make it obvious that you're taking a photograph. Um, you know, you want to capture that, that you know, decisive moment. Um, and I find the two ways to hold the camera best are um, this one here is where you have, you're holding with one hand. It takes a little skill to get this down. But um, with the iPhone, you want to be, if you're using the native application and you're going to trigger the phone, you'll have to keep your thumb on the trigger and then hold it like this and then let it go. Um, that way you get a little bit more flexibility with it rather than being in the obvious, um, as we'll see in this portion where it's the bottom part of the frame where it's showing you're holding it up like this. Um, I prefer the top, the top slide myself. I've kind of developed this way of holding it for a while. I found it's, it's worked really well for street photography. And then we and then just get into really basic composition with this. Um, we have a lot of people that come on our iPhone workshops that have never even picked up a camera. Yeah. So, you know, it really inter introduces them to, um, to photography in general. And uh, so, we, you know, we start with the real basics, the rule of thirds. And, you know, if you have 
any kind of camera, it's really about the composition and what you're doing with the camera. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to have an $8,000 camera. You can get some amazing images with this little iPhone, as you can see. Yeah, and once you, um, and these iPhones have a, you know, you, you, you always want to pop that grid up, the rule of third grid that's always on there, and use that to compose your images. Um, it's very helpful. Um, and once you get this part, once you understand this part of photography, and any type of photography, it just, it just opens up your world for you. Um, we had a, a young lady at a workshop last weekend, and um, once we got this concept down, she started really getting excited, and, um, and the images just started popping. Um, and not you know, the rule of thirds isn't for everything, but for you know, most of your photography, you're going to have to stay with this, uh, this rule. So when we, when we go out on an uh, iPhoneography shoot, um, you know, our classes may run three hours or so. And so you have to really keep in mind uh, battery life. And so what we, what we suggest is that you turn your iPhone on airport mode, which will stop it from searching for Wi-Fi or searching for, it won't actually accept telephone calls. But basically what that does is it will keep your battery life longer so that you can keep it for three, four hours. Yeah, and you're doing if you're doing continuous shooting uh, in a workshop, or you're out on your own jaunt one day, and you want to shoot a lot, just turn off turn off all this uh, all these devices, this, the airplane mode, the Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi, and um, your battery. You should get like at least uh, three or three hours of three and a half hours of battery life, easy, and you'll be able to capture a lot of images. Um, but if you're just on the cuff and just shooting day to day, not necessary. It's not necessary necessary to do this. Um, so one of our favorite accessories that we use is this uh, macro and wide-angle lens, um, which really can expand the creativity on it. Yeah, this is um, a Olo Clip. We've been using their device for a while, and we're pretty happy with uh, the results we're getting at it, um, getting out of it. One side is a macro, one side is a wide-angle. Um, and then you, uh, yeah, and, yeah, you get a, a fisheye, a wide-angle, and you can get a macro if you uh, unscrew one of the lenses. Real helpful. It really expands it. But a lot of there's a lot of lens devices out there. But this is one we we've been working with lately, and we like it a lot. Now, with the Allo Clip, is it is it uh, camera or sorry iPhone specific? So is it you have to buy it for the four, four S, or the five, well, uh, or can it be adjusted? Well, right oh, now they have it. They have it for the five, and they just it just came out for the five. They have it for the four, four S, and what I'm hearing out, they're coming out with something for the Android. Devices. I'm not sure, but uh, but I know it's really it, they're pretty solid on the five and the and the four S right now. So you can get it's 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 the width of the phone that determines the size of the clip. So you can get them for both the five and the four. Perfect. So uh, this shows some of the shots that you can get with the macro accessory, um, and this was handheld. So we didn't do tripod or anything with this. So I was pretty happy with the results of this. Yeah, we did a whole series of it was macro iPhone photography <laughs> a couple of weeks ago and we had some fun with it. Yeah. And then of course the wide angle shots are always cool. <laughs> okay. Um, and then we have the, uh, the constant lighting system uh, that we use from Manfrotto, the Manfrotto clip. And you can see we have a couple of the smaller version and the larger version of the clip here. And the big thing about the iPhone um, why why the, this uh, this extra lighting uh, is is facilitated? Why it's why uh, I would suggest something like this if this is what you're you're finding you're going to be needing is the fact that when, with the iPhone it comes with a flash system, and I'm sure you've all taken your iPhone, you've taken a picture of somebody, and you've gotten that deer's in the headlight flash with really blown out. It's just it gets the picture, but it's nothing you really like. Um, the thing about the iPhone, it's not a it, it's really it excels in uh, when the light is a bit, when there's a, a lot of good light. The problem is it's uh, you've gotten those shots where you've taken it in low light and it's been kind of muddy and kind of messy and you're not really happy with it. So um, you flipped on the flash and it filled it in, but you got the shot but you weren't happy with it. The thing that's nice about these auxiliary lighting systems is that you can actually um, you can actually control the intensity of the light and it's a constant light system. And you can also um, use them off camera too, which is kind of neat. And I've played with that quite a bit, where I've actually mounted the clip light, this is what we're talking about here, um, off to the side at a 45 degree angle and gotten a, a, a different look. Um, uh, it's, pretty, it's a pretty useful device. I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. And this is um, our model here. 
So showing without the clip light and with the clip light. And you got the eyes. You got some nice, uh, you know, the eyes are lit up nice there. So fun. I thought this had a, was a pretty amazing result. Yeah, this is nice. I did a little floral thing. This is just using the i the iPhone, and I was using uh, I think I was using the native camera. I wasn't using any kind of lens adapter on this one, but I I, I lit it with uh, the clip light on off to the side, and uh, it was kind of a still life thing. I thought it was kind of fun. And this is another one. But the real important thing about it, um, too, is to have uh, some tripod. Yeah, I think yeah, it's really true. Yeah, with, with, with the iPhone, uh, you know, everyone's always holding their phone up and they're taking a shot, you know. And I, and I, I really think as, as advanced as all this technology gets, you know, from iPhone to digital SLRs, you're always going to need a tripod, you know, because unfortunately we're shaky animals. <laughs> you know, we move a lot and uh, your environment's always changing. Um, when we uh, when we started using the iPhone, we played with quite a few different devices to, to steady it, and uh, we found that these encased uh, systems seem to work the best. And you can clip the you can clip it on any any direction you want, vertical or horizontal, and um, and they're smaller, come back. You can put them in your purse, you can put them in your back pocket, and you always have them. Um, and if you're doing uh, if you want it steady and sharp, you know tripod's always the way to go. And here's a really good example of that. This is pretty amazing that this was done with the iPhone. Yeah, I shot this out on the beach, and this was like two exposures that needed to be, uh, they were high dynamic range exposures, so they had to register as a, uh, one picture was taken for the highlights, one was taken for the low lights. And being on a tripod, it, they registered perfectly, and I was able to uh, develop the film, or develop the, uh, the image into a pretty sharp uh, resolution. You can see we're having a rough winter out here, Will. Yeah, yeah I can tell. <laughs> you must, it must be horrible to have to walk in sand. <laughs> it's just really bad, you know. <laughs> in New Jersey, we're not having that kind of luck. Uh, we've got, mind you, we have warm weather today, but it's getting colder. <laughs> um, and so some people might say, you know, what? look at this uh, with the tripod. Is this overkill? This is not overkill. Um, we were actually, we were on Big Sur on a workshop, and uh, I guess we, it was a digital SLR workshop, and uh, of course you have your, everyone's got their iPhone in the back pocket, and I had a, I just, uh, I guess Holly was working with a client, and I wanted to get a shot with the iPhone and um, of this particular uh, image we're going to show in a moment. And but I had to get above the surf, you know. So I, I got out my uh, my trusty uh, Manfrotto tripod and slapped it on there, and this is what we got. Yeah, one of our favorite spots on the Big Sur coast. Yeah, but I mean, it like I said, the way that the iPhone captures light is amazing, especially the rays of light like this. I yeah, like this is really fun. Yeah. But also, uh, you know, keep in mind that really the use of images is somewhat limited. I mean, internet, social networking, uh, limited printing, um, and uh, iPhone or iPad glory. Uh, yeah. But we have done some printing, um, especially if you have sort of a grunge look where it's not really all that important for it to be tack sharp. Yeah. Um, you know, those types of prints are great. Um, yeah. I would I wouldn't recommend I wouldn't recommend this iPhone for um, and I do know photographers that do portraiture with iPhone and it's it's pretty amazing imagery I've seen, but um, if you're going to reproduce this image for print, um, if you're going to use it for um, you know like on my other I do a lot of large murals. Uh, my image murals are up to 20 feet sometimes, but I'm shooting uh, you know 36 megapixels, 42 megapixels. I'm shooting like high resolution, either uh, either uh, you know Nikon. Um, or you know, medium format, and you just you have to have, to have you have to have really crispy images for that. Um, and your printing, um, it's it is limited. You can print something out for this. It depends what the image is. You know, if it's not if it's not determined to be crispy and sharp, or you're gonna need that perfectly perfectly perfect image. Um, I would say go ahead and print and have some fun with it. Um, it just all depends what you want to do. Yeah. I was shooting with it. I think it's an eight megapixel uh, in that, and I think that the 4s is still eight. So um, we're still shooting with the 4s, and um, we're not. We like it. Here's some uh, examples of uh, what what it looks like. Some of the controls within the camera. 
um, another example of our harsh winter that we're having. Um, <laughs> <laughs> rub it in, rub it in. Um, so you can see it's got the rule of thirds built into it. It's got a um, um, a zoom on it as well as flash option. Um, on the zoom, I would not recommend using the uh, the zoom device on these cameras. Um, what'll happen is you get a it's a digital zoom. The image is pixelated. You've always done that. You've seen this great image and you wanted to get close to it so you went and you slid that over and you looked at it later and it wasn't quite sharp. Um, it's always good not to use this. Um, walk up to the image, you know, walk to what you want to photograph. Um, don't rely so much on the zoom. Um, I think the I treat the iPhone similar to like a, a 50 millimeter lens on my digital SLR. Um, it's uh, it's kind of a street camera, you know. It's that type that when you want to get an image, you'll walk up close to it, and you'll get a nice crisp image. Um, same with the iPhone, you know. You just walk up close to it. Don't be afraid to approach your subject. Um, it's something that I always. And I, I wouldn't use the native flash either. Yeah, turn off the native flash. That's because uh, it just doesn't do well. Yeah, use the clip light. Use the clip light or whatever you have. Now, question we have from a, an attendee. You can get fairly close with these, and going back to some of your flower shots that you did and some of your macro, what would you say is the, the macro is built into the camera itself, but what would be the closest uh, distance you could get to your subject with the camera without any accessories, with the iPhone, I should say? I would say probably, I'd say about 8 inches to 8 to 10 inches. Um, with uh, some of these accessories, you can get uh, the macro accessories. You can get in. You have to get in really close. I think the focal length is like almost an inch to three quarters of an inch, because you want to get yeah, and you have to steady it. Um, and I think that brings up a good point, which you touched on earlier. Uh, again, using a tripod will definitely help you when you come to steadying these, because you know yourself when you hold the iPhone, if you hold it the way everybody does when they're shooting at a restaurant or shooting at a table and they're sitting across from friends, everybody's holding it in front of them, and of course we all know that's not the steadiest way to hold a camera. So of yeah. course when they try to do that in a macro setting where you're going for extreme sharp images, uh, chances are you're going to have camera shake and not necessarily have the lens be at fault from the iPhone itself. Exactly, well, exactly. And uh, so this next frame, yeah, you can see we've got the the, the Manfrotto tripod setup. Yeah, we're okay. using this yeah. little tripod. This is a really cool one. There's a lot of various different types of tripods you can use. This is a nice one you can stick in your pocket. Because I put it on a keychain even. Uh, and this, what we're showing here is this is a more advanced application that you can shoot raw images with. It actually produces uh, pretty high quality raw files. Um, Gives you um, white balance and exposure uh, compensation, uh, exposure lock. So, so you can really lock. get pretty advanced with it. Yeah. Um, this particular one is a fun and creative toy camera interface that we really like. Um, yeah, this is uh, this is kind of a, it's an old uh, the the toy cameras the, what they call the the Dannys or the yeah, it's the older cameras. Yeah. So it gives you the ability to uh, change a film quote film change a lens, change a flash, uh, to come out with um, a really fun interface. Yeah, it's a pretty funky little little, little application. So we'll show you some of, the, um, some of the app examples. And again, everything's very easy, um, easy, to, easy to use. This is a native in the top left. This is a native camera. This is just shot with uh, what comes with the camera. Um, and then on the right, we have a high dynamic range where we expose for the lower part. We can see the ribbon on the mask. Got a little bit more detail. And then on the bottom left, we have a uh, selected color. We actually can go in and select which colors you want to uh, pop in, uh, in the photograph. And then we have some funky lens effects on the bottom right. Um, going back to the native camera app for a second. Uh, there is a great panorama feature if, uh, if your iPhone's been upgraded to the iOS 6. Um, the new panorama iPhone continuously moves while you're taking the panorama, so it's really easy. Um, yeah, the quali really and the quality of interface. this uh, application is great. I mean, once you, it's taking this pano shot and you're getting a better, a higher resolution picture. It's uh, the megapixels go up. Mm -hmm. And um, it's quite clear. I've seen some of these uh, blown up big, and they're they're pretty pretty nice. 
here's another example of the same app. Um, then the HDR effects, um, high dynamic range, where you're actually taking multiple exposures to to expand your exposure range of your of your picture. Yeah, it just combines the exposures, and you're getting your highlights and your uh, your low lights all in one image. So if you've ever taken a picture and you notice that one part of it is is really dark, uh, that's how you're able to pull in the low lights and the, and the highlights in one frame. Now this is on a tripod. This is the image we showed earlier. So um, when you're doing this and you want it crispy, you got to lock that camera down. Um, here's another example of some of the special lens effects. Um, and and with these types of apps, uh, you really don't have control over where the light hits. If you notice the one with this oak tree on the left, um, the app pretty much decides where it's going to highlight the lighting. So you could take two or three pictures of the same shot and, and come up with something different. So that's really the fun of it. Yeah. Um, it doesn't make up for bad composition, but it really, and once you get your composition down with the rule of thirds, um, you can really sing with these applications. They can really do some great, great things. There's a nice multiple exposure one. We were at a uh, Bob Dylan concert, and of course, I, I got out my uh, pseudo Bob Dylan lenses, um, and I put them on, and then Holly took this shot. <laughs> um, also, you can uh, use multiple apps. So you can pull in pictures from one app into another app. Um, so you can use the a lens effect and then pull it into a selective color app. Um, you do lose a little bit of resolution every time you add another layer of application, but with the with the the quality of these pictures, I don't think it really matters so much. Yeah, and it depends what you're going to do with it. If you're going to you're going to put it on your uh, your desktop or you leave it on your iPhone, if you're not going to print it out. Um, you can just have fun with it. But the more, like Holly said, to read it again, the more apps you put on, the more resolution you lose. Um, we also have some uh, monochromatic effects. Um, this this particular app just pulls out the red, so it really gets you everywhere you look. You see red. Yeah, it just pulls all fun. the red out. Really nice. Um, the, the other uh, app with the selective red. We seem to like this one a lot. Yeah, we seem to like these selective <laughs> color ones. <laughs> There's something compelling about it. I don't know. It's. Uh, well, this is like at this point you're in the high addictive stage of iPhoneography. Right. <laughs> once you start, once you start playing with these things, you just you can have a lot of fun. And this this was one that I took. Uh, I was just walking by, and I I had one of these cars years ago, and and the picture wasn't great. I, I was shooting into the sun. It just didn't excite me. And I just ran it through a couple of different applications, and I just got this. And I just was really happy with it. This is all done in camera too. Another one. This is uh, I took this during one of our Ventura workshops. We have a lot of cruising of hot rods down in Ventura, where we live, Ventura, California, and um, I think this really enhanced. It the just whole changed feeling. the whole feeling of it. Yeah, it really did. More of the the selective pulling the selective red out. Mm -hmm. um, this is this kind of turns it into more of a cartoonish look. Um, but it basically you go into this app and you can continue to clarify it and then we added a different frame to it. But really, I mean, all of these kinds of changes take, you know, 30 seconds to do. It's, um, now, and you also look, the, the composition works here really well. And then once you throw an app on it, you just, it's just, it's just fun. And this was, this next one coming up was kind of interesting. This shows you how to use a tripod. I had we were in a small cafe up in uh, where were we in San Luis Obispo, in uh, California. Um, I set the little tripod up and I was just trying to get a shot of the dog sitting there, and that's and and it was a two exposures. It was set for a high dynamic range exposure. I set it on a, about a two second time uh, you know a timer, so I wouldn't be touching it, so it would be sharp. Um, and what happened was and well. Then back up a little bit. I exposed to the highlights and the blue sky, and then the dark areas. And as the first exposure went off, a gentleman walked by, and the second one went off. Then I ha and then all of a sudden, this composition was created, and it uh, wasn't my intention, but it turned out amazing. And then I ran it through a um, a couple of different grunge apps.
to give it more of a kind of a nice feel to it. And um, but this is what you can get with the iPhone. It's completely spontaneous. Um, you, you know, you can you can plan for something, but you never know what's going to happen. And sometimes you get these amazing effects. And this is another one where uh, I just love playing with the light. You know, you'll get to the point where um, there's certain subjects that you really like. I love to just play with when I see rays of light coming in because it just it, it enhances it so much. So this was on our big big Sur workshop. We're going through one of the you took redwood this, forests. You took this when we were. It was a DSLR workshop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I guess we were working with a client, and then um, you just look up and you saw this thing. And you know, we're walking through a campground, and there's smoke, and there's the yeah. sun rays coming through, and it's just amazing the way it captures the light. Yeah. Um, this is another shot from that same trip. You know, uh, it's my job as a as a guide to make sure that we're you know standing at the right spot when the sun is coming over the mountain. Um, <laughs> so this was that exact right right moment. Uh, as the sun is coming up over the Big Sur coast, and uh, you know, iPhone captures it magnificently. Mm -hmm. Same thing, you know. Same same conversation about, uh, you know, it's the best camera you have in your pocket. I mean, this was this magnificent sunset, and I, all I had with me was my iPhone. But uh, this was this was incredible. So this next slide, I just kind of wanted to go through and show you some of the, the layers of um, editing that I did on this particular picture. I guess in the top left is the original photograph. That was shot with the native, you shot that with the native app? That right? was shot with the native app, yeah. And then you ran it through the various... Then I just actually just did two clarifying effects on it, which basically just saturate the picture a little bit. So um, you can see that there's quite a difference between the very first picture in the top left and the final version in it. Like I said, that was just uh, two, two steps, two layers. Fun. Um, it, again, it did, a nice, it did a really nice effect on that picture in the texturing of the roadway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah isn't that amazing? Um, same thing with this, you know, where we go in and you can just play with it. Um, just keep adding different effects to it to see what you get. This probably is about uh, two or three layers as well. I think this this next one is one of Mark's favorites. Yeah, this is neat. I, this was a, a high dynamic range app. I, I shot this exposed to the highlights and low lights, and I ran through a grunge filter and just gave it a, a nice effect. It's just, uh, I don't know, just great. I just love this. I just love the way this turned out. Now, a question from one of the attendees, and I, and I think this holds true to most uh, small cameras. Um, the the attendee has commented that. Uh, the iPhone shows more of the scene than what they're actually seeing in their screen. And that holds true to a lot of point-and-shoot cameras, some of the bridge cameras you see out there. Uh, any comments on that when it comes to composition? Um, well, it's like you're, you're right. It's not you know, like a full-frame camera view, full, full field of view. And, of course, when you, get, when you start cropping down on a lot of these cameras, you're going to lose some of that. Um, as far as composition, if you stick to your rule of thirds and you get, you try to get, you know, you, if you stick to that, um, you shouldn't have any issues. I've never really felt that I was missing much because you're dealing with a, it's a simple device. Uh, it's, it's not to get too caught up in the details of like missing something, you know, not getting to, not seeing exactly what you're seeing behind the lens. Um, I've really never found it an issue. Yeah, um, I haven't had a problem No, we've never really uh, had a problem with that. Okay. Um, it's it's all about composition with with the photography. I mean, any photography. Very good. That's another one. Nice grunge filter. And then you get some of these surreal effects. Uh, we were I don't know. I, I I'm a road bike rider. I like going out for a road bike ride uh, when I'm not out photographing things. Um, and I was going down California Coast Highway one morning, and I. And I do it quite frequently, and uh, this is looking down PCH. And I took this shot, and um, I ran a, I, a more filters than I normally put through it, just quite a few. And I, the more I ran through it, the more it gave this surreal effect. I really enjoyed this one. And so I wanted to show you some of the different effects you can get just from one shot. Um, I think this was this was probably in the Snapseed also, but so fabulous sunset with this tree in, on our Eastern Sierra workshop. And I just 
pulled in some different different effects, the black and white effect, the saturation effect. Um, you know, you, you could just go on all, all day with these. Things. Now, did you use a tripod with this? That's no, I, I didn't. You use a tripod. So this is a handheld. So this shows you you can, you can do it handheld. Um, it depends what your end results are, you know. Sometimes uh, it works. Sometimes it doesn't. This one was interesting. Um, I used a little tripod on this one, and I, I did it for a HDR shot. It was just, it was dark, you know. It was a sun had set. And I was concerned, oh, I'm going to get a noisy picture. And I said, well, I'm not too concerned about that because I'm going to make it more noisy. So I went ahead and processed it through more of a scratchy, scratch effect filter. And um, There are some new apps that have just come out that are for low light also. Oh, really? So, yeah, I haven't played with those much. Yeah. But that We're constantly upgrading our syllabus on our workshop on apps and things. What app do you this currently is, use right now for low lighting, say? If you had an app that you use currently, well, for the low light, we're sticking with the uh, the HDR app. We use like uh, either uh, HDR Pro or True HDR. Yeah, we find those work great with the low light. Um, sure. Yeah, this shot here, this is uh, the one on the left. Is just that was just with the native camera app, and um, then I ran it through a filter and got this effect. This is. This is some of my aviation stuff. I'm, I love aviation photography. Um, well, this type of aviation photography. Um, I ran this through a filter, and it shows you what you can do with it. Here's another shot with some different multiple apps. Our star model. <laughs> <laughs> um, this shot I love. Was this uh, this was Memorial Day? Yeah, I shot this right? down at Pepperdine University down in Malibu. Um, there was uh, a, I think three hundred oh no three thousand flags were were set up there at Pepperdine oh, University. September eleventh. This was a memorial, and um, and this was a multiple shot. I took this with uh, using HDR and it was two exposures, um, and this was handheld. I must say. And then you get so it it took one shot of the flag one way and then the other way so it was just it looks like a multiple effect, and then I ran it through another filter, and it gave a nice painterly kind of effect. And this is another. Just showing some some multiple um, effects with the same shot. Yeah. This is another one. This is shot up on the Big Sur coast. Again, using uh, the HDR program, right? Mm -hmm. And then we clarified this, clarified this also. And then a custom frame. Yeah. Now you see, as we're getting into this, why this is such an addictive thing. <laughs> yeah, there's <laughs> lots of great things you can add to it. There's a lot of things, and and the thing the thing that's amazing about the these these devices is that they're they're at your fingertips, and you don't have to. It doesn't have to be a dedicated day of shooting, and you can just be spontaneous and um, and once you if you dedicate a day to doing this it's even more amazing because that's all you're doing you're concentrating on it and um, it's a lot of fun I really enjoy it uh, this the collage apps you know look for some of these there's a couple of different ones um, are really fun to use um, especially if you want to post on social networking maybe you um, want to do you know five or six pictures from a certain trip that you did. Um, it, it allows you to take the picture and rotate it to any particular way you want to do it. So it's a creative collage effect. That one's really fun, too. Um, so black and white. Yeah, and then black and white, of course, is near and dear to our hearts. I love black and white photography. And then you get these sort of, uh, this is one of your shots, isn't it? That's, that's a shot that I used with, actually, it was a selective color app. Um, and you can see that it has some blue in it too. Um, so basically, this particular selective color turns everything black and white-ish, uh, except for red. But there was no red in this picture. So, so you don't have to. So you can use these selective color apps to, in different ways. Also, this is our root system. I shot this up in the ICRs. It's a view of Los Angeles and downtown out of an old building. Oh. That's another tree out there. In the, there's another selective color one coming up here. This is neat. And this is using actually the Olo clip. Uh, we liked uh, it was the wide angle fish. I think he used a fisheye on this. 
and that was fun. This is I was in a coffee shop and um, I saw this there was this girl walking around. And she had these you know the tattoo on her feet, you know. So I ran that through. A, I took that photograph and ran through a filter, and it just it was just neat. It just had a neat effect to it. One. one of your favorite portraits? Yes, that's my favorite Holly photo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is uh, one of the cute towns uh, that we go to on one of our workshops. Yeah. Um, black and white. Black and white. I just like the color, just selects for the red. And that's, and that's, that's about it. So yeah. I guess the whole thing is we just need to get out there and play and, and use this fabulous tool. Um, any way you possibly can. Yeah, it's just an amazing device, and um, I think it's changing everything. Um, I think it's enhancing everyone's vision. I think it's with for regular photographers, it's almost it's a tool to enhance your creativity because you're constantly looking at composition. And if you're a photographer, you're always seeing imagery all the time, and now you can uh, you can express it much faster. And if you're new to photography, I always find it's a way to get into it and a lot of a lot of times we teach people uh, you know composition and and they can either stay with the iPhone or they can move on to more advanced photography it's uh, it's opening up the whole world to photography for people um, I guess I, it's it's similar to the old brownie cameras people had or or the or not so much the brownie camera maybe the uh, the Polaroid, Polaroid cameras we all, we all grew up with some of us grew up with in the day where people just pointed that and they took a shot and they pulled it out and, and uh, so that's just great with it so, uh, I think the other thing to, to know too is some of the apps and that that are out there, uh, and people have been asking about the different apps and things like that that you guys use. And Snapseed was one of them you mentioned. And mm -hmm. again, people that are on the uh, webinar today, uh, Mark and Holly will email you guys some stuff when they get the attendee report to some of your questions. You may have more specific to them, and that way you'll be able to receive or know what uh, kinds of the stuff they may use and what they kind of recommend from. Um, an app point of view or even from an accessory point of view. And of course the great thing is if you do have an opportunity and you're in their neck of the woods and would like to take one of their workshops, I would certainly recommend that to anybody as well. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind for everybody is the webinar today has been recorded, so you'll be able to go back into the webinar. Uh, we will send a notification to everybody about the recording of the webinar and you'll be able to go back in and maybe there's an area that Mark and Holly touched on during the webinar or you missed and you would like to get more information on it. You can then get in touch, of course, with Mark and Holly and, uh, and ask them about it. And at the same time, view the webinar, again, if there's something that you need to find out any uh, information on. At this point, I think we're going to get ready to wrap up. Mark and Holly, you have any other comments you'd like to make in regards to iPhonography? Um, yeah, just, uh, just make sure your phone is charged and get out there and, and, and start shooting, you know, and have some fun with it. Um, and don't take yourself too seriously. <laughs> um, it's, all about, it's all about having fun, and that's, uh, I think that's what brought us into photography in the first place. It was, uh, you know, we, we, were, we were creatives, and, uh, and it's, it's, a fun, it's fun. And, uh, and just make sure to stay with the fun factor and uh, don't take yourself too seriously and enjoy yourself. That's what I would say. Yeah. I think you bring up a good point. I mean, the thing is, I think with any type of photography, you the more you take, the more pictures you take, the more things you try, the more creative you'll find your imaging gets. And I think that some of the tips you gave today in terms of using the rule of thirds is maybe as a starting point because, of course, we all know rules have been meant to be broken. And oh, yeah. uh, the great thing is some of the tips you guys have given the listeners today will certainly hopefully add to some of their iPhoneography that they may be currently doing and or expand their horizons as they expand more of their iPhoneography. Um, a couple other things, that, and again, thanks Mark and Holly, and just as we finish up, uh, definitely make sure if you want to visit uh, for more webinars, there will be more webinars posted on the Manfrotto School of Excellence. You had all of Holly's and Mark's uh, contact information, and again, they'll be on the recording as well. And uh, keep in mind too, there's a number of workshops that are listed on the Manfrotto School of Excellence as well. And again, the beauty of the Mentor School of Excellence is it's about empowering everybody to uh, enhance their ability to take better images. And for instance, we have, there's a great one coming up with Quest, uh, our Photo Quest Adventures, and this one happens to be to Mexico, and it's with a, another mentor of ours named Stacy Pearsall. And definitely, if you have a chance, visit uh, the Mentor School of Excellence to get the information on this. 
Mark and Holly, I'd like to really thank you for taking the time today. Uh, we are going to give away three clips, actually, and we're going to give away the clip uh, with the 240. So uh, we have the people's contact information, and uh, Deb Grove from uh, Papillon, New England, you're our winner of a clip, and it'll be the clip with the 240 LED. So you're going to get a nice size LED to work with and have fun with. Uh, we have Graham Bresendale from Greasby, Great Britain. He's going to receive a clip. And the final one will be Drew Ash from Homedale in Idaho. So well, congratulations, I should say, to all three of those clip winners. And we will get a clip uh, sent to you very shortly. We have your contact information. And if we do need any more information to make sure to send the clip your way, we will definitely request it. So Mark and Holly, thank you very much for doing a great job today. And, uh, thank you, Will. Yeah, and I hope some it. people, thank you again, and I hope some people will definitely uh, sign up for some of your expeditions as they do look a lot, uh, look a lot to have, be a lot of fun, I should say. And the great thing is if they're in a warmer climate than where we are going in New Jersey right now, that certainly, <laughs> can, <laughs> mind you, it's been good weather today, uh, getting colder tonight. All so right. anyway, and, ladies and gentlemen, this will end the webinar today. And again, I really uh, appreciate everybody taking the time. I appreciate Holly Montalbano, our producer here at uh, Manfrotto Distribution. She helps with us as always. And again, I look forward to helping everybody with another webinar in the future. And Mark and Holly, I hope we have another opportunity maybe later this year to host another webinar with you guys. Thank sure. you so much. Okay, thanks very much, everybody. We're going to be signing off in five minutes. This will end the audio portion, and then I will shut down the uh, webinar in about five minutes from a visual portion. Thanks very much, ladies and gentlemen. Have a great day, a good afternoon, and or, or a good evening. Thank you. Thanks, bye. Bye. Sign on, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not the screen. Just sign on.